So here's a quick demo of what you'll be seeing in this tutorial today. So I have the relay and uh, my lights installed. So, you know, controlling it with my phone, it's just a browser app. So I can turn off, on, off. It's pretty responsive. It's running on two Raspberry Pi zeros, um, 1.3 and out of the Ws. And it's pretty cool. So anyways, enjoy the rest of the video. So let's take a look at all of the equipment that we'll need in order to install our under cabinet lights and control them remotely with our Raspberry Pi. Of course, the most important thing that we need is an actual Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the original Zero. This is not the W. Uh, this is, I've been using this for years now and it's been going really great. You can, of course, do this project on any Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to be the Zero or the Zero W, but because the Z original Zero does not come with Wi-Fi, I have this little dongle, uh, which will occupy the, the one micro USB be uh, data port um, which will give me Wi-Fi because I'll be connecting it connecting to it remotely so I don't really need it for anything else the next important thing we need is the uh, this relay so this is a relay module you can buy this online for a dollar or two you can buy these individual relays uh, as well and solder them yourself but you know uh, you'd have to figure out a, a bunch of other things so I just bought this uh, relay. I'm not an electrical expert. I'm not an electrician. So I try to do things as easy as possible without uh, trying to kill myself. So what this relay does is there are two relay switches and you'll see here, uh, let's see if we can read this, um, that this is uh, a 5 volt DC. Uh, it's, it's controlled by 5 volts. And as we know, our Raspberry Pi can provide 5 volts of electricity. So when a Pi gives this uh, five volts of power, the relay will either turn on or off depending on how we have this set. There are two channels here so you can connect up with two different lines here. So we'll only be using one for this project. Um, for my personal projects I'll be using both of them. Uh, but you can see a little diagram here where it says uh, there's like a break here. So when these two are connected uh, that means this is always closed. That means whether the if the Pi is not sending it any any power that means uh, these two will be connected otherwise when there is power the middle two will be connected the same thing with the, the two relays uh, there are a lot of information on relays online so uh, do look them up you can also use transistors for this the only reason I'm using transistors for this demo is because I'll be using them when I go over um, installing RGB lights um, which are more uh, which will be also cool. The next thing I have is uh, power. This is a power cable that we will be using to supply power to our uh, lights. So this has uh, these male and female uh, uh, connectors here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, and it takes you know a positive and, uh, and ground connection here. So you need a, a um, both male and female. So what I have in the middle here is just a break in the line, which these two lines will be going into the relay so that we can use our Pi to control the relay and say, hey, connect these. So what will happen in the relay is that these will be connected, the power will, be come on, will come on. When we say, hey, Pi, turn it off, these will be disconnected and the lights will turn off. So relays are pretty simple. And the same thing happens in a transistor much faster and you don't hear a click. You'll also need a, a couple of jumper cables. So um, you can do this a couple of ways. You can create, you can make your own hat to connect the Pi and the and the relays together. Um, for this demo, uh, for, for the purposes of this, I'll be using just jumper cables, which uh, I'll just hook into my Pi Zero uh, and then uh, plug these pins into my relay. Uh, there are pins here, just for simplicity's sake for this demo. Uh, and of course you'll need a LED strip, whoops, LED strips. So I have these 50-50 uh, um, SMD LEDs. Uh, I'll try and not solder and, and try and use this uh, as a whole, which probably won't happen for the for the whole project. So, but because this comes with a, um, a, a female end, yeah, it's a female um, a 12 volt uh, end here. So uh, if you do cut things and you do want to uh, spread them out, you'll need to solder uh, at the brakes here, which I probably will have to do. The next thing you need is power for both the Pi and the lights. So I have this 12 volt, uh, let me grab this, whoops. So I have this 12 volt um, connector. It supplies uh, two amps of power, which is more than enough for my project. Uh, and it converts, you know, one 10 volts to 12 volts for this project. And power for the Pi, which for this, for this uh, part of the demo, I'll just be using a power bank and just to keep it simple. 
The next two things are pretty optional. So uh, in under my cabinets, I brought these LED extrusions, which I will uh, install the lights here. Uh, it has a, uh, um, a cover as well, a, a glossy, not a glossy cover, but like a like a milky cover, so that you know it diffuses the light, and it will go under my cabinets, you know, like so, and. It's just easier to maintain, but you don't really need this. You can use the, the sticky end of the uh, of the lights and, and just stick it under your cabinet. So we have our pie and we have our three jumper cables, which I'll be connecting um, to my relay down there. Um, again, for the for the purposes of this, I won't be soldering any headers or soldering these uh, cables, uh, these jumper cables into my Raspberry Pi Zero W. Instead, I'll be uh, just hooking them in. These are uh, these are pretty these are solid strands. So. Uh, You'll need three, so I have uh, red, black, and blue. So red is for power, black I'm using for ground, and blue I'm using for uh, for the data pin, which I'll be putting in GPIO pin 18. So I think uh, from the top, so again, red is power, I think these two top are five volts, uh, followed by ground. The, the way I'm doing this is not really the best way to do this because uh, in the back they can connect and then if they'll short out. When that, when that happens, your lights will just turn off. Uh, shouldn't be anything bad happening to your Pi, it might turn off. And then the uh, pin 18 should be on the three, four, five, sixth one down. Um, you can look at a uh, GPIO pin chart for more information. So for this demo, I'm hoping that I can keep these two separated. And yeah, and then later on for my actual implementation, I'm going to solder in some headers so that it's uh, easier to install and, and take out. Now uh, on my uh, Relay, um, there are a couple of pins here. Uh, let's see if we can read this. Um, yeah, here. So uh, the the text here. Oh boy. Okay, so uh, I'll just read them to you. There's ground, input one, input two, and VCC, which is for voltage. Uh, let me just move my light source. Maybe this will help. I'll do it this way. Yeah. So uh, the VCC will get my red pin. Uh, input one or input two, depending on which one, which of these I want to use, uh, will get my data pin, and the ground will get the ground. So I'm just going to plug those in. And I'm using um, input one because uh, I created these uh, these headers, um, and it's connecting uh, their side by side. So. There you go, the connection between my relay and my Pi is set. The next thing we want to do is set the connection between um, our, our wires here so that we can cut the uh, power uh, on and off as we see fit. So these two will go into uh, any of these two. So I'll probably put them, uh, make sure that they're um, always open. That means there's no connection uh, between them. So I'll put them in the, uh, so this is input one, right? X, yeah. K1 and then I'll put them here and here. It doesn't matter which which one you do. So let's do that. Okay, so I just screwed them in. There, uh, there's nothing special, you know. You loosen loosen the screw here, uh, push the wires in, it, and plug them back in. So now we have an actual uh, circuit. Uh, only when the Pi is giving it power and the and the two circuits are actually closed. Um, when that happens, the the third one will disconnect. So you it, so you have some freedom on how to actually uh, run this. So you can either say, you know, hey. When the Pi is powering it, I, you know, give it power. Otherwise, the default will be always be on, which is, you know, the Pi isn't uh, supplying it power. Um, it'll be connected. Uh, it's pretty simple, right? Okay, so now we need to test the system and actually do the software. So just to uh, just to get started, uh, the, I'm just gonna start connecting things. So we'll have the the male uh, connector from the relay going into the female connector of the of the strip. The female connector of the relay will go into the male connector of the actual power source, which is uh, here, which I'll plug into the wall in a moment. Uh, because my Pi Zero does not have Wi-Fi, I will plug this into the uh, the data s slot, and then I will power this uh, with my power bank. So now this should turn on, and there you go. There's some uh, lights on the relay um, and I'll plug this in and let's go to uh, the computer screen and work on the software and, and test this out. Okay so I have the uh, the UI set up uh, as well so if this looks familiar it's because it's the uh, similar to my control and LED from your browser tutorial where I set up the, the buttons to control a tiny little LED. We're using the same concept here and uh, the uh, the code for this specific 
uh, application can be found on my GitHub. So if you don't already follow me or any of my repositories, feel free to do so at an astronaut. I'm still working on this at, at the time of me making this uh, recording, but by the time this video is up, it sh I should be more completed. So um, let's do a quick test and, and then I'll go over the code and how to quickly implement it. So as you can see on the corner of your screen, I click on turn on, you know, it turns on. If I turn it off, you can hear a little click, um, which is the relay switch turning on and off. This is the, the electromechanical switch inside the relay that's actually connecting and disconnecting um, what's happening. Um, when one cool thing that I did here that I didn't do in my tutorial here is uh, I, I made the button persistent. So if, let's say if I turn it on, uh, I'll click on, I'll refresh and, and the button stays turned on, right? So when I come back, no matter who comes back, it's not just me, it's not, I'm not storing this in cookie. I'll show you where I'm storing this in the code and it stays off. Um, and then I click on turn off and I refresh and it stays in that state um, perpetually for that specific light. So I think that would be pretty useful. So let's go through the code and very quickly um, because it uses the same implementation as my previous tutorial on how to turn on uh, your LED. You, you can you can go through this tutorial if you're interested in how to you know uh, go through your headless Pi, how to use the ARP Pi .gpi library, how to run Apache, Flask, Flask behind Apache, and a simple Ajax tutorial. Um, so, uh, as and of course, my README on this specific repository will be updated uh, with all the steps. So, um, what I have is that I have installed uh, Apache here, so I won't go through the installations again. And let me see, var HTML. Um, here I have a, a, a directory called Kitchen Lights. So, see kitchen lights and all of my uh, code is in here uh, you can ignore this directory here it's, uh, it's how I have uh, uh, cloned this repository so I can do the uh, get pull and it'll um, see it'll get pull I don't, I don't know. I have to fix that at some point um, what what will happen is that it'll uh, look at my repo here for changes and then and then pull them in um, and if you're not, oh, it looks like I made a, a change uh, to status.txt, yeah. So I'll need to move this out and, and figure out a way to do this. So um, anyway, so uh, there is a lot of information here on prerequisites and how to install and how to get this running. You'll need to install, if you want to use this without cores and without like a port 5000 or having to turn on your Flask application every time, you'll need to set this behind Apache with WSGI uh, enabled. and the code is all here so you know and instructions on how to do this can be found pretty easily so um the status.txt file so if i go into here and do cd LED, and i do uh let's do nano status.txt um it stores either a zero or a one so whenever this changes so let me actually do this um cat Txt. Uh, so you can see that uh, it's a zero here because the light is turned off. If I turn it on, the status automatically changes to a one here. So um, what my front end application will do is whenever it loads, uh, I'll just go through the JavaScript really quickly, is when it loads is that it looks at the LED status.txt file and uh, guess the status result and then it'll, the button status will update um, depending on what the status is. It's not the, the best way to do this, but it's it's pretty simple. Um, you know, I, I do use this method a, a couple more times here so that uh, when I do call the kitchen API and I turn on and off, I can just reuse that same, same um, button status uh, method. Uh, if you want an explanation on how this code works, uh, I do recommend checking out my my simple Ajax tutorials. It uses jQuery and some basic JavaScript to pretty much create this, and I pretty much reused uh, reused that code uh, for the Ajax calls at least, and then the button toggles. Um, but anyways, so that part is done. The next thing we want to do is we want to put these into my LED extrusions. My okay, so the next steps for here would be to uh, uh, put these somewhere. So I'm I'm st I still. Don't plan on soldering these uh, headers in yet uh, into the Pi. I probably will at some point. I probably won't be doing header pins. Instead, I'll just uh, as they, as they're in here, these uh, these wires are pretty pretty st uh, stable. I'll just probably solder them in here. Whoops, just probably just shorted that out. Um, but because uh, these two touched, uh, the next thing is uh, I need to cut 
my LED strips into length. So I have uh, a bunch of these uh, extrusions. Uh, these are uh, like V brackets extrusions. And uh, this is a short uh, one foot one. I also have three foot ones that will go under my three foot or 18 inch ones that'll go under my uh, kitchen cabinets. And I will have to cut them and take some more of, of these black and red wires and, and cut them up. I won't take you through the boredom of cutting them in the middle and then soldering them. So, you know, with the magic of editing, let's skip forward to what my final setup will look like. Um, because I'm sure you can find videos and instructions on how to actually cut these LEDs, uh, LED strips in the middle, and solder them. I'm not the best at soldering, so I won't bore you with those. Okay, so this is pretty much set up. I have my uh, Raspberry Pi and relays in this, uh, this little container here made of Lego. Uh, it, it is connected to a 12 volt power supply on the floor, and I have my extrusions here uh, ready. Um, whoops. Uh, you can see that um, this is not exactly cut to length. It's because uh, where the LED strip uh, breaks off into multiple pieces, uh, it's, it's not you, it's not aligned properly. But it's okay. When I put it in, when I put it into my uh, kitchen cabinet, you won't really notice it. Um, I have some clips here that I used. Um, they look like these. Uh, you know, instead of soldering them, but I ended up having to solder some of them anyway. So you know, I'll probably remove these before I install them and then solder them into place. And here are my two. Um, LED extrusions. You can see there's a little one because I have a little cabinet and then a longer one um, for my longer under cabinet. And you can see that I have the page open on my phone. Um, since uh, it's mobile friendly and it looks pretty good on my phone, it's just a big turn on button. When I start adding in more lights, the, uh, the buttons will get smaller but it'll still look pretty mobile friendly. And just test it out. So click on turn on, you know, the lights turn off, turn on, you know, it's pretty, pretty bright. Um, and when it's under the cabinet, it'll light pretty much anything under the cabinet. And turn off, on, off, on, off. Works pretty well. Um, I'm going to, um, there are a couple ways you can install these under the cabinets. So these come, uh, these extrusions come with these like metal brackets that you can screw into place. So uh, they kind of just latch on here and, and they'll hold this into place if you just screw this on. I won't use this because I, I don't, I'm already going to be making holes uh, in parts of my cabinet. I don't want to make more holes. You can use double sided tape and just tape these on. But I like actually using like these Velcro. Um, so um, like one side tapes on to uh, the lights and the other side tapes on to the under the cabinet so that I can uh, just quickly just, you know, just pop them in there and take them out if they ever need maintenance or if I need to replace any of these, any of these strips. Um, it, it's easier. So I only have one of these left, so I'll be buying more later. But uh, I'm going to put these in and then I'll go install them in my cabinet. The desired end state for my project would be something that looks like this. So I'll eventually be taking out the uh, the Raspberry Pi and relay from my Lego set and putting it into a junction box that looks similar to this. So this is what I'm putting on the other side of my cabinets. So um, it's just a, a simple junction box with some holes cut, it, cut out so that I can connect to the relays. Um, the screws, it's screwed into the back. Uh, these screws are nylon screws, not metal screws, so they're not conductive. Um, same here on this side, um, even though these are uh, metal uh, they're not making any contact with any electronics and it would just close up um, you can see that this raspberry pi has some headers that i soldered on and this is the uh again this is the raspberry pi zero not the w so it has the um the uh, wi-fi adapter here and then i'll just plug these in close it up and it'll be a neat little box so it'll only have um three tiny wires coming out so it, it has these um, input and output for the relay, the Wi-Fi adapter, and the power for the Pi. Okay, so what I have here is a pretty much the finished product. Uh, I put the LEDs inside this extrusion here, uh, and put some uh, tape on the end, and I you can see that I, t I uh, uh, attached some Velcro, uh, the 3M Velcro straps that, uh, that I showed you earlier. Um, and I do have the uh, uh, the wires running through. I have this one installed. Uh, you can see I drilled some holes here. I have uh, this other one. It's, it's pretty dark here, so once I turn it on, you'll see exactly what I mean. But let's look at the connection here. So this is uh, inside my cabinet. Um, as you can see, I, I for goad for went just bypassed my uh, Lego and uh, put it into this. Uh, junction box that I showed you earlier. So it's the holes are coming in from the bottom and it's connecting and it's uh, will 
turn the lights on when I attach this in, when I put this back in, and then I use my cell phone to... No, I'm just gonna stick it in there. Right, pretty cool. And you can see that I do have an outlet with um, uh, USB here, so I have that connected. So let's turn on my phone and just try and do a live demo. So I'm gonna turn my lights off. You can see my phone here, it's the turn on button. Turn on, there you go, it's turned on, off, on, off. I do like how the button looks, you know, in the dark. Um, you can hear the click on the relay. Pretty sweet. Uh, I'll tuck this in later, this little wire. Um, and one thing I didn't show you uh, earlier was uh, that, you know, my cabinet is longer than just these two. So I do have, you know, another cabinet set up over there uh, with lights coming in. It's, it's lower power. Um, uh, the, the power adapter that I'm using is lower power, so it's not as bright, but you know, it's two different Raspberry Pis controlled by the same button. And uh, here you can see there's a left on, right on button, so I'm just going to step back here. I'll show you that that does work, so you know, left on, you know, it turns it on and off, and this toggles the right side. And this is the override. So I'll have both um, the single control and the multi control Raspberry Pi on uh, Raspberry Pi control code on GitHub, so do check that out. So, um, anyway, this is my finished product. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, and I hope you can install something like this similar in your home. You know, it doesn't have to be under cabinets, you can put them in the living room, dining room, etc. I plan on installing some more in my uh, living room as well. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. Whoa. The response is pretty, uh, pretty quick. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.